The next person that will come up here to the podium, uh, he works for Chicago, he's the executive director of Chicago Area Project, is Mr. David Whitaker. Let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. You know, so many good things to say about Howard Latham, so I'm going to keep this brief as our time is uh, drawing near. Yeah. Before we talk about Howard, one thing I want us to do, folks, is to recognize the people who put on these kind of data organizing events. Uh, behind the scenes, there's a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of headaches, a lot of stress. But let's just take a moment to recognize the data organizing committee. With, he thought it was Ken Butler and all of his whole team that put this together. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, we, we're so, we don't get together like this at all. I mean, we, what we usually get together like this at funerals was something to see. But to get together to honor those people who admire and respect so much is a real remarkable contribution to have made. So we just thank you again, Ken, for putting us together. This is great. So as, as I mentioned, um, Howard is a person that we all know, we all admire and respect. I'm gonna tell you a couple quick stories you may not know about Howard. Howard's contribution goes far beyond Chicago and the West Side. Howard has worked on assignment in places like Harbindale and Cairo, starting organizations at the farthest end of Illinois. He's worked at places like Rockford, Rock Island, Waukegan, this guy has traveled all over the globe here in Illinois, pulling together an organization like the James Adams, uh, Major Adams Community Committee. He has made contributions. Folks recognize him all over the state of Illinois. One thing you may not know about Howard, because he does not toot his own horn. Real quickly, this one story. 20, 20, 25 years ago, there was a young man coming to our office on a regular basis to receive briefing and mentoring from Howard Latham. This young guy would come in and all the women would go crazy. Oh, who is that? Good looking man. And they would just absolutely go crazy. But how would work this young guy? He was organizing on the south side of Chicago, organizing ministers and churches. And you guys probably recognize who that who it is by now. He would often come there and meet with him. And Howard told me, David, you got to meet this young man. I think he has great potential as an organizer. I say, Howard, you, know, you always say that about people. <laughs> But I would say, but David, I really need it this time. So you gotta meet this young man, he's doing great. So um, how has this God given this servant to recognize talent, honesty, devotion in his heart? So I met the young man, but unfortunately at that point, I didn't have that God given this servant talent, understanding. So I said, okay, how he's, he's good, but you know, so what? So how would, um, how would say, David, we should do something with him? So um, I wish we had, I didn't. But this young man, went on to become a state, uh, state, uh, uh, United, uh, a state senator, and then U.S. senator, and then president of the United States of America. That's Barack Obama, that Howard was right there for. Yeah. I'm not saying that Howard made a president. All I'm saying is there's different steps along the way that each one of us needs to go to the place that God has for us to go. And there was one step that Barack needed as on his journey to greatness. If Barack had relied on me, he was still organizing the South Side of Chicago. I didn't, I didn't see in him what Howard saw in him. So that's the kind of person that Howard is. He really believes in people. Another quick story, and I'll be uh, we'll pull Howard on up here, is that um, you see Howard now, he's, he's cool, calm, collected. He's the, he put me up cool, he said he wanted to look like the man in black. <laughs> All cool. But how it wasn't always that way. Back in the 80s, when I started Chicago Area Project, how it was right across hill. <laughs> that man would demonstrate, organize, take uh, direct action on almost anything going on at any time. How it could be counted on to bring the challenge to the systems. He would always do that. When I first met Howard, he was working for the state. I came from North Carolina to work for the Chicago Area Project. When Howard would come into the office for different meetings, he would look at people like me and my colleague, Ricky Williams, and he said, well, you guys, you guys don't look like you're no organizer. Always wearing no suits. He began to call us the suit guys. And I would say, um, 
I said, we got, who, who is that crazy man? He said, they don't worry about it. He's kind of irritable, but he's a great organizer. And so every time we have this meeting, every single week, Howard would come and talk about me and Ricky and our suits. You guys don't know nothing about the community. Y'all can't organize your way out of a hole. I said, Ricky, I can't stand that man. But thank God that a few years later, we are all working together. And Howard, How we was able to pull together all of our major organizing projects. I mean, he has influenced and helped so many people on that way. I see Antoine and you know about Jerry Campbell, um, worked for under Howard for so many years, and now he's bringing federal resources back to uh, the city and back to all of our organization. Arthur Robinson, I see. I mean, so many folks that he's worked with. The Honorable Walter Burnett, uh, Judge Michael Studley. I mean, Richard Steele, my goodness, the celebrity. Here. So Howard has touched and influenced and worked with so many people. Oh, but yeah, see you here, man. Okay. So we are just uh, delighted that Howard chose to stick around and touch and influence. As someone said before, he would never know how many people he has touched, influenced, and helped to achieve greatness. So won't you join me in recognizing and honoring our dear friend, our brother, our colleague, the guy who we love, Mr. Howard. Thank you.